Right, hi there guys. Got a really cool video here for you today. This, as you can see, is the brand new GRS stock for the Mark II Crown. Now, I've been looking forward to this for quite some time and I'm really, really excited to get my hands on it. For those of you who don't know, GRS are a stock manufacturer specialising in high-end rifle stocks with built-in adjustments. For the crown stock we have both an adjustable cheek piece and an adjustable butt pad. So what I thought I'd do in this video is give you a good look over the stock and compare it to a standard FX crown stock. So this is the normal crown stock. This is in forest green. Uh, it's a bit shinier than a standard one would be. I've given this a good polish up and made it nice and shiny. I prefer them shiny than the sort of satiny matte sheen that they come in but as you can see both use the green laminate I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up but the greens and the blues in the GRS stock seem to be better defined than the standard crown stock okay here are the two stocks side by side what I'll do is I'll just give you some information on both of them and I'll give you a good look over both stocks so the standard crown stock is ambidextrous what this means is the standard crown stock can be used by either the right handed or left handed shooter. However, the GRS comes in both right hand and left hand configurations. You can see by the cutaway for the palm here, this stock is a right handed stock. A left handed stock would be the same mirrored on this side. The next difference is the adjustments in both cheek piece height and length of pull adjustment with the adjustable butt stock here. Now the standard crown stock has the cheek piece up and down adjustment. As you can see here the cheek piece is slightly raised and it also has a small amount of offset. Whereas the GRS stock is plainly up and down. The adjustments are much nicer on the GRS. It's just this push button here. You push the button and lift the cheek piece up and also the same for the butt pad. You push the button in and you can extend the butt pad to what you want. In total there's about 22mm of adjustment here on the shake piece and on the butt stock at full outward it's about an extra 30mm and total adjustment in the standard crown stock is about 20mm and the crown does not have an extendable butt piece. Right that's about it for major differences what I'll do now is I'll get you some close-ups and then I'll tell you some of the things I like and what I don't like about the stock. Okay, so starting at the front here, what we've got is an enlarged cocking lever pocket. What this allows you to do is just more easily get your finger in and pry the cocking lever back. In the old stock, it was a bit hemmed in, and what I tended to do was grab the lever up here rather than prying it down at the bottom there. So it's good to see that they've made that change. A little further back, we have the safety recessed um, with just F for fire and S for safe. Same good old safety, works well, no problems there. Just a little below that we have the new trigger housing. In the old stock the trigger guard was built into the wood. I believe this is the same trigger guard that comes on the Dreamline Classic and it simply screws on the bottom here through the stock. I quite like this change as you can get to the trigger adjustments now without taking the rifle out of the stock. So with a ball ended allen key you can easily adjust the screws in here to get your first and second stage where you want it to be. So I'll give you a close up on that. There. This one furthest back that you can see is the second stage and that one furthest forward is the first stage. So both accessible in the rifle for trigger tuning. If we move forward a bit, we see the undersides of the stock here. Now it might be tricky to tell on camera, but this is much flatter than it is on the standard stock. So you can see there that this portion here is a bit flatter. This will better accommodate a rail if you choose to put one on there, pick a tinny rail, or Will more easily rest on a bag. So a very nice change there. Just a final note on the bottom, the sides have been deeper recessed for better access to the fill port cover. 
on the standard stock these walls were a bit thicker and you had to pinch it to get the fill port cover off and your fill adapter in. Right, if we flip the stock over you see it's recessed for the calibre wheel here and if we look back a bit you see it's also nicely recessed for the power wheel. Now the power wheel is much less protruding on this version as you can see here there's not much to grab a hold of. It's not a problem with fingers but I could see if you were wearing gloves this may be a little more tricky to hold. But that being said I think it fits the rifle better aesthetically as it's less sticking out from the side. A little further back from this we have the grip. Now the grip is a lovely bit of work. See there it's all sculpted out to fit your palm very nicely. Fits the hand just like a glove. It really is a nice rifle to hold this. I think I prefer this one over the standard crown. It really is a nice rifle to hold and to shoulder. I think they have slightly changed the alignment between the grip and the trigger as the trigger fills in a nicer place. If we look at the top we can see it's perfectly designed for thumb up shooting and when you're holding the rifle safety is nice and easy to reach. Can be flicked on and off safe without letting go of the rifle. And there's just a look at the back side of the grip. Fingers wrap round and fit nicely on this side of the rifle. Right, so here's the back of the gun. You can see here the really nice colours of the laminate. This is the forest green laminate and the colours on it are spectacular. The forest green laminate crown was my favourite colour in the previous stocks so I'm really glad they chose the green to do this stock in. You can also see the GRS logo which has been routed into the stock. It's very nice there. And finally we come to the adjustment buttons on the cheek piece and the butt stock. Now for me adjustable cheek pieces aren't a necessity. I can sort of pick and choose where I shoulder the rifle to get myself in line with the scope. However, I know for a lot of people that an adjustable cheek piece is mandatory for most guns. And I'm glad to say this one is, has a really nice range of adjustments. There's about 22mm of total adjustment in the cheek riser and it has lots of fine incremental adjustment in that rod there. The notched post allows you to increment it very gradually. So you'll definitely be able to get the cheek weld you need for your scope combination. Moving on to my favourite part of the rifle, the buttstock. More importantly, the ability to extend it. The number one struggle I have with rifles is that they're just too short. And whilst the standard crown wasn't too bad, it was definitely a little on the short side for me. So I'm really happy with this buttstock here. There's about 30mm of adjustment in it and at its furthest reach it's just perfect for me. It's topped off with a very nice soft recoil pad here. So that's all the features of the stock and a good overview of it. In conclusion I think the work that GRS have done on this thing is fantastic. It's a real nice upgrade to the standard stock and I think it pretty much makes the Crown one of the best guns on the market today. It's a lovely gun to hold, to shoulder, and whilst I haven't had a chance to properly test it at a range yet, I'm sure it'll be really nice to shoot as well. But before we go, I just thought I'd point out the only issue I can find with it is, is with the trigger guard and how it's been implemented. So what FX have done is they've used a standard part and modified it slightly. But unfortunately, it hasn't turned out that well for them. Number one, you can see the marring and the damage in this face here. This is caused by the edge of the screw as it gets tightened up. As you can see there, it's a socket head screw going into a countersunk hole. So it's just tearing bits and pieces off the side of the trigger guard there. Now, when it's in the rifle, you're probably never going to see it. But... It's just one of those little disappointing things that you see. Also, when they've modified this, they've literally 
clamped it in the mill and took a face pass off there. It looks like they've just painted it as the paint's starting to chip off already. But that is the only thing I can find wrong with this gun. And GRS have done their job perfectly. Because it really is a nice stock. I can't overstate how nice it is. The only thing that would make it better was if it was shiny. But that might be just me. Okay, so I'll give you a good close-up of it and then we'll call it good. So thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.